you very much. And so to Paris. Nathalie Loiseau, France's Europe Minister, is a rising political star under President Macron. It's been a week when French thinking was very dominant in that Brussels summit, so lots to talk about. Nathalie Loiseau, thanks for joining us. The crucial problem this weekend post the summit seems to be whether the British idea for some kind of backstop or insurance policy can be time limited and in London Dominic Raab and others are saying it must be time limited is there any chance at all in your view of the 27 accepting that well as you know we want a good agreement we are working hard on it we are behind Michel Barnier who is doing a terrific job uh, and we need it urgently uh, this withdrawal agreement is almost ready, but we still have to fix the question of the Irish border. And we have to have a definitive answer, or at least no temporary measures uh, which disappear and we don't know what to do after that. This is the question that we have. The backstop, the idea of the backstop is that we use it until or unless we don't have another better solution. We know that. But we don't know what's going to be our future relationship. As close, as tight as possible, but still we need to fix the question sure. of the Irish border. And for that reason, this backstop idea cannot be temporary. Cannot be time Well, we need to have uh, a British answer to what we have proposed. The ball is in London's court uh, and we are waiting. And uh, it's about a question of weeks now until we are sure that we can have a good agreement. But on the uh, Irish border issue, we agreed together, London and the 27, that the situation has to be as similar as possible to the current one, meaning no hard border, uh, no controls between Northern and Southern Ireland. So but there has to be a solution. But you we must cannot only rely on negotiation about the future relationship. But you must understand, surely, Natalie Loiseau, it's very difficult for the British government to accept that one part of the UK, Northern Ireland, has a different customs and trading relationship with the EU than the rest of the UK. That's dividing the UK down the middle. Right. Um, this is something that has to be fixed by London. The decision to leave the European Union has been taken by the United Kingdom, not by the 27. And we have this common... Uh, knowledge that there has to be a proper solution for Northern Ireland for political reasons, reasons related to the peace process and economic reasons. So this has to be fixed by London. Whether London wants to, be, to belong to the uh, customs union for the future is a possible solution as well. And it's up to the UK to decide. We are open this, to these sorts of solutions, mm. provided that rights and obligations remain balanced between UK and the European Union. Really, we are waiting for a workable solution coming from London. But, you know, in, in some parallel universe, if there was a suggestion that Corsica or Brittany had a different customs relationship from the rest of France, the French government could never accept it, could do. The question is not asked in France because we are not leaving the European Union and because there is not this question of hard border. You remember in December we agreed with London on the basic principles of the withdrawal agreement. These basic principles were about the situation of citizens on both sides of the channel, the financial settlement and settling this question of the Irish border. And we had agreed that there, there has to be a backstop if we don't find a better solution mm. in the future relationship. It, so here we are. We have to have this answer and we have to have it now. It, there cannot be a transition period. We cannot work on the future until we have a proper answer on the Irish border issue. But if the only answer that the EU accepts will be an answer that divides the UK into two territories, which Theresa May says no British Prime Minister could accept, then we are heading ineluctably and inevitably towards no deal. So until uh, the British side comes with another solution, uh, we are open to uh, listen to what Prime Minister May would have to propose, but we are still waiting okay. and time is running. Your, your country is planning already for no deal and you've 
published a draft piece of legislation in the National Assembly which suggests the question of visas for British people coming to France in the event of no deal. Now, I know President Macron has spoken about this as well, but can you give me a complete guarantee that there are no circumstances in which British people coming to France would require to apply for visas first? Well, what we have said, uh, we have explained to our MPs what would happen if we don't take action and if there is a no deal. The reason why we are having this draft bill is precisely to avoid chaos on March the 30s. If we do nothing, there would be sort of a chaos. There would be no circulation between uh, the UK and the European Union and the situation of British residents or British tourists would not be uh, solved. So this is the reason why we are presenting this draft bill. Uh, measures which will be taken regarding British citizens living in France or coming yes. to France. 150,000 we, we want them to stay, but this has to be reciprocal. We uh, have a high priority. This is the situation of French citizens living in the United Kingdom. No, I, we I, will do as much as the British authorities do for our citizens. Well, um, I know there's a lot of frustration about aspects of the British political scene, um, but nonetheless, Theresa May has given an absolutely unequivocal promise to French citizens living at the moment in the UK and citizens of other EU countries in the UK, their rights will be respected, come what may, under all circumstances. Why can France not do the same for British citizens living there? Well, we are fully committed to uh, preserving the rights of British citizens living in France or coming to France. And I've come to London, I've spoken to Dominic Raab on this issue, saying that we should not play with our citizens. Now we need to know exactly what the British have in mind if there is no deal. But let me come, on to, to come back to a simple idea. Let's have a good withdrawal agreement because everything is set in this draft with all agreement regarding the citizens' rights and it's the better solution. Mm. All right. One very quick question at the end there. Is there going to be a November summit, do you think? If there are sufficient progress towards a withdrawal agreement, we'll be happy to make a summit. But there is no use of meeting heads of state and government if negotiators have not come to an agreement. Natalie Loiseau, thanks very much indeed for talking to us this morning.